Tonight on Beer Geek Nation, Founders 2010 Kentucky Breakfast Stout. Hey guys, welcome to Beer Geek Nation. I'm Chris Stelz, and tonight we're going to be looking at Founders uh, Kentucky uh, Breakfast Stout, which is the 2010 version. Not an age version or anything. This is one that's currently out now. It's released in March. You can usually get it through mid-April. Um, if you can get Founders beers in your area, you're definitely going to be able to find it. Um, probably uh, you should have gotten it by now if you haven't. Uh, it does fly off the shelves pretty quick. It's kind of an expensive beer too, but they don't make a whole lot of it. And it is uh, one of their best sellers for, uh, for very good reasons. Um, it's basically, if you've had their uh, breakfast stout, it's basically a jacked up version of that um, aged in oak bourbon barrels for a year. Uh, the bur the breakfast stout comes in, I think, about 8.2%. This comes in at 11.2, 70 IBUs, whereas the breakfast stout, I believe, is 60. And I'm saying that off, <laughs> off the cuff, but I think it's 60. Um, it's basically an imperial stout. They brew it with coffee, chocolate, aged in oak barrels, and a cave for a year. So uh, if that isn't the recipe for a perfect beer, I don't know what is. This does get compared a lot to um, Goose Island's Bourbon County Stout, rightfully so. It's a very similar beer. They're both excellent beers. Um, there is a little bit of a difference between the two, and I'll get into that here in a second once we get pouring. Um, yeah, so uh, with that said, uh, let's get this poured, uh, how it smells, how it tastes, and uh, we'll get this going. So right after pouring it, um, you get an immediate difference between uh, KBS and Bourbon, Goose Island's Bourbon County Stout. And the big difference there is with Bourbon County Stout, you get hit in the face um, with the bourbon smell, with the bourbon alcohol smell. Very little, very little smell from the stout itself. When I say that, you should usually be getting like a coffee, um, dark chocolate kind of uh, aroma from the stout. Now it's not you know a necessity, but it it tends to be there in most imperial stouts. I didn't get a lot of that from the Bourbon County stat, and you can actually watch a review. Um, it is there a little bit, but after drinking that and then drinking this, um, this one is just, uh, to me, it seems a lot more complex. Sure, I'm getting the, the bourbon barrel smell, the light oak, um, light levels of alcohol from that, um, vanilla, but it's so evenly paired with the deep, rich, dark chocolates I'm getting from this. Um, I'm getting huge amounts of coffee notes from this. And it all just kind of swirls together and blends together, just make a really incredible smelling beer. Um, and don't get me wrong, the Bourbon County Stout's a great smelling beer, great, you know, rum and everything on that, but they're different beers. Um, so it's really going to be a matter of preference whether you like the kind of the higher alcohol, um, bourbon-y smell of the Bourbon County Stout or kind of the overall chocolate, coffee, espresso, uh, oaky, vanilla smell of the KBS. Both amazing. I prefer this one. Um, having had this one, this is only my second time I've had this one, this particular beer in, you know, two years now. So, um, I, I do prefer this one smelling it now. Um, yeah, it's just, it's gorgeous. It's, deep espresso notes, vanilla, and then at the end you get a little bit of the, the alcohol smell from the, the oak barrels, the bourbon barrels. A lot of coffee, a lot of coffee. It just smells like fresh brewed coffee. Um, a lot of chocolate in there, a lot of uh, like almost like chocolate coffee. If you've ever had a, a chocolate coffee bean, that's basically what it smells like. Um, light hints of oak. I'm not getting any hop characteristics at all, which is you know absolutely fine in a, in a beer like this. Has been aged for a year too, so I wouldn't expect too many. Yeah, just a gorgeous smelling beer. Um, as far as the appearance and everything, I mean, dark you know dark as night, um, which is what I would expect from an imperial stout. Light carbonation, a little bit of head as you can see in the as you saw in the pour video. Um, it's like a light brownish kind of a khaki color. A little bit of lacing. You can see the uh, alcohol legs on the glass, which is which is very cool because it's a kind of a 
noteworthy uh, thing you don't see too often in beers. Uh, so let's give it a taste. Yeah, this is a much more balanced beer than uh, Kentucky Bourbon Stout is. And again, I'm not I'm not bashing Bourbon County Stout at all. It's a great beer. Um, but these two, this was actually brewed before that, so I guess that should be compared to this. But you know, whatever. Um, Eleven point two percent, I believe. Yeah, eleven point two percent ABV. You can taste it, but you wouldn't know it. Whereas the Bourbon County Stout, 13.2, I think you definitely taste that. You know it's there. It's a sipper. This one, sure, it's a sipper at 11.2, but man, is it a, it's smooth going down. Mm. Right in the front, right in front of the mouth, you get a lot of chocolate. You just get hit with really the darkest chocolate you've ever had. Right in the front of the tongue. As it goes to the back, you get the light coffee notes, a little bit, a tiny bit of hot bitterness, um, followed by kind of an alcohol burn. Not too overwhelming. I mean, just enough to make you know, hey, this is a, uh, it's pretty big beer. Mm. It's delicious. It really is. Um, I would recommend if you do get if you can get a four pack of this, it's going to run you probably upwards of twenty bucks. Uh, it's an expensive beer. Uh, put two in your basement. I know I got four. I put two in my basement. Um, let it sit for about six months to a year, and you're going to notice a big difference. Everything's just going to kind of get, the volume just kind of get turned down. Um, everything's going to kind of mellow out. It's going to be a lot more drinkable. Um, and it's kind of an interesting experiment. The chocolate and the coffee are going to just you know tone everything down. They're going to kind of blend in more with the malt base of the beer, um, and it's going to be a really cool beer after about six months to a year. Um, I, I highly recommend doing that. Um, if, you can, if you can't find this and you're on the East Coast, um, I always recommend Weyerbacher's Heresy, which is their uh, Imperial Stout aged in oak barrels. It's just a, a top-notch beer, although that's closer to the uh, Bourbon County Stout than it rather than it is the uh, KBS because KBS does use all the chocolate and all the coffee. Um, so far as West Coast, I'm sure, uh, I believe Old Rasputin, they have barrel aged versions of that. If you can get that, that would probably be pretty close to this. Again, it doesn't have the coffee or the chocolate in it, but it's still going to be very comparable. Um, I definitely recommend trying to hunt down bottles. It's really good stuff. Um, and if you can find it, I hope you do. I hope you enjoy it. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give this one a 10. It's it's great stuff. Um, and again, it's Founders Kentucky Breakfast Stout, 2010 version, 11.2%. Um, it's available now, and you should be able to find it. If not, beeradvocate.com. Trade for it. People are always looking to trade for it. So uh, until next time, cheers.